All right, it's Monday at 11 o'clock. You know what that means. It's the Chaz Palminteri Show. Monday at 11 o'clock. I want to remind you all, please hit that subscribe button. We love those subscribers and hit that like button. Also, don't forget my other podcast that I do with my dear friend Michael Francis, The Wise and the Wise Guy. Check that out. Subscribe to it. Like some of the episodes because I got to tell you, we tell all these great stories. We tell, we review books and talk about it in the with these great mob stories and how it relates to the mob, Machiavelli and the mob and uh, the Stoics and the mob. It's uh, pretty interesting and fun. The wise and the wise guy. <clears throat> but this is the Chaz Palminteri Show. And uh, very excited today. Now, remember, before I go on, Neighborhood Logic with the girls, Catherine Laducci and Tara Conatracy. Uh, so we have a lot of good things there. So subscribe. Also, if you want to come and see the one-man show, go to chazpalmetary.net and uh, uh, just you'll see me do the one-man show all over the country. It was a big hit on Broadway, plus it won show of the year in Las Vegas. My restaurants, Chaz Palmetary's on 40th and uh, uh, 30 West 46th Street and in White Plains, 264 Main Street. So a lot of things cooking here, but tonight, is it tonight or is it today? Today, <laughs> I got a great guest on. You know, I got to tell you, folks, before I bring him on, I read a lot of scripts, okay? In fact, I, I you know, I, I would re- rewrite things for studios. Uh, there's only three scripts I ever read, <clears throat> excuse me, where I ever said I have no notes. I, 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 I can't do anything with it. Uh, three, Save It Private Ryan. Shawshank Redemption, and Green Book. <clears throat> and I'm dead serious when I say that to you. And we have the writer, and it's his story about his dad, just like my story was about you know me and my dad, Bronx Steel. This is his. He won two Academy Awards. The movie was incredible. Love the movie. I actually knew his father very well, Mr. Tony Lip. We have his son who wrote Green Book won the Academy Award for Best Screenplay and Best Movie of the Year, folks. The Oscar. I have the great Nick Vallelongo. Nick. Oh, thank you. Thank you for, for having me. No, are you kidding me? Uh, I've been trying to get you uh, on for like uh, months here, but you're always flying to Rome and flying well, to I just, Italy. I just figured you ran out of Italians to interview, and so this is probably the last show. He no, doesn't have no, anybody no. left. There's nobody left to interview, so I did, that's I why did, I'm here. I, I did a, uh, interview a lot of Italians. So, Nick, let, let's. your dad was Tony Lip. Yes. I, your dad was a character. I mean, was that... I mean, I think it was, but was that a true... Uh, uh, picture of your dad, the way uh, you know you played it. Absolutely, absolutely. And he I mean, was brilliant. Now, Vigo Mortensen. Vigo Mor- Mortensen was. I mean, and I'm prejudiced, but I think he should have won uh, best actor. I, I, I don't. Yes. Take, I don't take anything away from uh, Remy Malek. He's amazing. That was one of my. He favorite, was great. One of was one of my favorite movies. He was, was great. The, the, the Bohemian Rhapsody, and he was amazing. Yes. A little prejudiced, but. Yeah. Vigo really. Uh, Vigo was. Uh, he transformed. He, he did transformed. it. He did it. De Niro, in the sense of, he became a different human being. He put on uh, almost forty five pounds, but his whole. If you, when I met Vigo, the, the first idea of Vigo, which was Peter Farley's genius idea, Pete called me up one night. And it was like two o'clock in the morning. Right. And uh, he goes, "I just saw this movie. I, I just, I just saw this movie." He goes, uh, I, "I can't sleep. I can't sleep. It was, it was amazing." And it was a Captain Fantastic. Captain Fantastic. Right. So I said, "Yeah, great, great movie, Vigo." He goes, "Yeah." He goes, well, "What do you think of Vigo?" And I go, "Well, Vigo is one of my favorite actors of all, of all time. I mean, I fell in love with Vigo from uh, Carlito's Way." Right. And so, yeah, I love Vigo. Yeah. What, what do you mean? He goes, well, "No, I mean, what do you think of Vigo? Like to play your father?" So I said, "To play my father?" I go. Wait, you watched the movie about a hippie guy. <laughs> he's a hippie. He's thin. He's out in the wilderness. Right. They do think, of, he goes, I just think he's an amazing actor. He goes, I don't know. Wow. So uh, Vigo's, like I said, one of my favorite actors of all time. So yes. I love Vigo. And 
He goes, just sleep on it. Let's talk about it tomorrow. He goes, I just had to tell you. because I got a thing in my head. He goes, I, I, I could see Vigo doing this. So now I can't sleep. You know, I'm looking Vigo up again. I'm just looking at pictures of him. I'm like, how is he seeing this? And then I, I don't know where it hit me. I, I thought, of what's the most iconic Italian character in a movie? I think it's The Godfather. Marlon Brando. If you're going to pick Ma- one. Marlon Brando. The Marlon Godfather. Brando, The Godfather. Of a non-Italian uh, playing an Italian. Well, I thought of that. I said, right. wait a minute. Marlon Brando, The Godfather, not Italian. Not Italian. And I thought, Vigo is like our generation's Marlon Brando as far as acting goes. Oh, I, yeah. I, I thought, and I called Pete back, and I said, I'm 100% in. I think I think you're onto something. I don't know how where you got it from, if it was divine intervention. I said, but let's yeah. go. And then he went after Vigo. And Vigo, at first, uh, he loved the script. He read it out of respect for Pete, you know. And then he said, I love this script, but I can't do this. I can't. I, how, how could I do this? I guess, really? He said that. Because it's not right. You got, you got to be Italian. You have to have, you got to have the, the Italian thing, you know? Right. And then he looked up my father. And, you know, years later, if people don't know my father became an actor. He was on The Sopranos. He right. played, played Carmen Lupatazzi. So Pete goes, no, no, you can do it, Vigo. I, you're the guy. I know I, it is. I was really, yeah. I, I got to give Pete credit no, on that. No, well, I give him all the credit. He, yeah. It was an amazing call on his part. <clears throat> and then, Vigo was like, no, no, no. And then he said, wait, the son, you mean the son is on board with this? He goes, Nick Valonga, the son. So he goes, yes. So I had a talk with him. We set up a, a, it was going to be a lunch. He came out to Jersey. At that time, my brother had the restaurant, Tony Lips. Right. In Franklin Lakes. And he came into Jersey to have like a lunch an hour or two. He ended up staying for seven, eight hours. I had my uncles there, cousins, people. And he just started eating with us and talking with us. And by the time uh, we were done, he was doing mannerisms. He was picking it up, and he said, "Let me, let me go home and let me read this." But we we bombarded him with food, and it was crazy. Right, right. And he told me that he had gone home. He read it again over the weekend. He couldn't stop thinking about it, but he thought, "I can't do it. I can't. I, I, it's not. I, I don't know if I could do this." He said he walked outside, and his wife was out in the garden, gardening or something. And he, and he said, "She goes, what's the matter?" He goes, "Ah, this thing. I can't get out of my head, but." I, I can't do this. It it wouldn't be right if I did it. And he said she didn't even look at him. She was pruning or she just went, you know you're going to do it. And he goes, I went, yeah, I'm going to do it. So he, Yeah, he I, I understand that. It. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes the things that you're most afraid of are the things you should do. Yeah, yeah. Because that's how you grow as an actor. That's how you grow. You know, I mean, yeah. I, I my wife was to do this. And she goes, yeah, well, why are you putting yourself through this? You're going to do it. And I go, yeah, you're right. I'm going to do it. Yeah. Now, did you, and, and maybe we shouldn't say this, but uh, we could always cut this part out. But anyway, th- was there anybody else you had in mind? Were, were there other names discussed for that role? There were a lot of names, a lot of, uh, you know, after a while a, a script gets hot, you know, if it gets a little hot, you have right. all the, the agencies. And, um, you know, all the big names, all the guys you can think of without naming them, and not really many of them were Italian. So not many were Italian. Mostly, there, well, there are none, really. Yeah. I mean, in other words, a younger you would have been the first thing in my head. I even yes. brought you up to him. I yeah. mean, you were in the running. There were a couple guys. Yeah. You know, I don't yeah, want I don't to, play I don't want to say certain names, but. Yeah. Uh, so people came up and, you know, they were throwing names. But then Pete came up with this idea. But as far, I, I always felt it should be Italian. But then, like I said, when Vigo got involved. That changed the whole thing, and I we went with it, and, and that was it. And that was it. Now, when you started shooting the movie, uh, Nick, were you on set all the time? Oh, yeah. I was you also a set. producer of the movie. You, oh, that's right. I'm sorry. You so, were yeah, a producer no, of the film. Pete was, uh, uh, the agreement we had was we would do a pass of the script together. Oh, Brian Curry, who introduced me to Pete, who brought the story to Pete. Yeah. Peter and myself, we... Um, we did a couple passes together of the script, so yeah. we, we all did it together in, in Pete's writing room. And then uh, he, he was going to direct it, and then I was going to produce it, Brian also. But wow. obviously, it was something for me to give up as a director. I said to myself, "This I've been waiting 30, 40 years to make this thing. I don't care if I'm making it with a, an iPhone and a couple of meatball sandwiches. Right, right. I'm directing this movie. 
But Brian told Pete about it. I met Pete. I fell in love with Pete. Right. And because a lot of people say, well, why would you pick him? The movies he had done before that. Yeah, like, that was a shit. Like, because the reason was when I met Pete and you get to talk to him, I, I think Pete's a genius. You know, it's also harder to make people laugh. Than oh, it yeah. is, right? To do drama. So, and then he told me his backstory and he was a writer and, and, and he fell into the comedy thing and he made he made a billion dollars. And, you know? and he writes funny. He, and and he, Tony Lip is funny. Right. But he didn't want to do funny. See, that was the thing with Pete. Pete now was uh, going to do his first movie without his brother. They were, he wanted to you know, get out on his own a little bit. I think they're going to do some more stuff in the future. But at that point, he was looking for something that was not a comedy that he could do. And he felt this was a story he wanted to tell. It, it, it made him connected to his father. So I, I just felt a, a thing when I met him. And I said, you know what? If you're that talented, it doesn't matter. Comedy, drama. Well, he's yeah. a talented genius, I thought. So to mm. work with him, number one, would, would be the biggest thing in my life. Yeah. But number two, I trusted him with my story. Uh, but but the bottom line was he allowed me to put, I participated in every aspect of it. Uh, you know, you, you got to switch your head. I've directed independent movies. I'm not the director of this movie. He's right. the director. He's the director, yeah. So, but once we had the script, it wasn't a lot of... We never really had an argument. Never an argument. There was one or two things on the set where we discussed something. But once we had the script the way we wanted it, he was shooting the script. Shooting the script. So there wasn't really anything that I said, yeah, hey, well, Pete, you're right. doing this. Well, Pete, look, di Pete directed it brilliantly. Would I have done some things different? Of course, because I'm a different person. But there, when I watched that movie, 90% of it is how I saw it in my head right, anyway. But, but let's face it. You couldn't have done it any better. No, because no, it I, won the Academy Award. I, I made the right decision. Yeah, you made I, the right decision. I believe in myself, and I want to um, continue directing. But that was the right decision for that movie. It's his movie, right? Uh, I'll say this: uh, I was very upset. You know, we won a lot of writing awards together, and Pete was nominated for the DGA Award, and uh, he we won the Golden Globe for I mean, Best Picture. How did picture. he not get nominated for director? He did not get nominated. Has that the happened? I think it happened maybe twice. Well, in that same year, it's happened three times, I think, three or four. Wow. But the same year, Bradley Cooper, who did a brilliant job. Brilliant job. the same year of, That's right. of A Star is Born. Amazing. You, mean, you think, you know, of a performance and writing and directing. Wow. And he brilliant. directed, too. Not nominated. Not even nominated. Peter Farley, how, how does he not get nominated so we end up winning this picture. What did it, did it direct itself? Of course not. I, I always wanted I, that. I, I think that was a, a very... I, who knows why that happened? I, I don't understand how that happens. A movie gets wins best movie of the year, and a director doesn't get nominated. No, oh, it's it's ridiculous. It should be if your movie is not. This is just my thought. If your movie is nominated for best picture, the director should automatically be nominated. Well, how could he not? They should be connected. They should be connected. If they right. win. They win. They don't. They don't. But uh, that, I thought that was uh, um, that was wrong, and I, I felt, that was wrong. I yeah. felt bad for him on that, but. We produced it together. He won Best Picture. We won Best Screenplay. <laughs> I mean, I think, and he did. He showed the the world another side of him, and he he did just a beautiful, tremendous job. And I was honored to have him. Yeah. That. Oh, yeah. Well, he, like I always say, well, you won. <laughs> you won. <laughs> you won. It was a tough road that 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 during that season. Yeah. It was tough. It was a tough year. It was a lot of mudslinging that year. They say the worst year for that stuff about attacking other movies. Well, and I, I was think like, you were right in the heart of it. Right in the heart of it. That was like the biggest year for it. And, you know, I, I just, I thought that was wrong too, because here I was, you know, I struggled my whole career. You know, you're striving, always right. working. I get something that's in, in the conversation and it was ripped apart for many reasons. Most of them, or all of them, really false. They attacked me personally. They attacked Pete personally. They were trying to go for Vigo. The, the movie isn't this. The movie's not true. The, the movie's completely true. Everything right. was shown. I had not only talking to my father on tape, Dr. Shirley was on tape. I talked to him, got his approvals for what it is. I had the letters from my mother, 96 letters that are postmarked. You know, in those days you went to the hotels, they had the stationery in there. So you had the name of the place, where it was mailed, what happened each day. I mean, I so, really, my father should have won Best so, Screenplay, and my mother for telling me the stories. Right, so the doctor actually would help your father write the letter. Doc, absolutely. And uh, there was the letters my father talks about, uh, Don Shirley, Dr. Don Shirley. So all of that, my point is, I'm not to keep going through this whole thing, but it, it was a tough 
time they were attacking lots of attacks on movies right because they i said wow the, the desperation to win this stuff i was just like thrilled to be around these people my peers are not not even my peers people i thought right. of like wow this is great so it had its it was a roller coaster but as you've pointed out to me many times you won so you won we won and uh i don't care what anybody says yeah you won it's a thrill it's it was uh it was like a there's only how many best pictures what is it 90 90 so now what is it now? 92, 92? In yeah. the history of the world, only 92. Right. Best pictures. So right. I'm sorry. You won. And best screenplay. I remember Paul Schrader was in that category that year with the movie he did with Ethan Hawke. And I'm like, Paul Schrader? Paul Schrader should win every time he's yeah, nominated. Yeah, Paul Schrader. Yeah. Right? And I, it was a great movie. A great movie. Great movie. A great script again. Great script. And uh, again, I met him. I was thrilled to meet him. And just be, I was an honor to be in the category with all right. these great Great people, but um, but we won. So you won. I, how yeah. do you think your dad would feel if he, if he was alive with all this was going on? Oh, he would have said, uh, "Yeah, of course he won. It's about me." <laughs> I I gave you the story. I should have the Oscar. They should put my name on it. <laughs> That's what he. Would. You would. You think he would have went up there? Oh, he would have went up there. Yes. Yeah, you no, know Tony. Totally absolutely, absolutely. No, I think he would have been very proud and very. Uh, yeah. And I always told him my whole life, I'm going to make a movie out of the story. I'm going to make a movie out of the story. He said, "Just be truthful, tell the truth." That was another thing. You know, it was a rough thing. With my father, the way we positioned his character because of who he was, right? To show, you know, he grew up as as you know, you know, we grew up in tribes. We were still in tribes. Like yes. the, the Italians were the Italians, and so to show him in a bad light at the beginning of the movie was a chancy because you go, oh, this is the guy we're supposed to love and but that's, follow. But that's the way it is. But my father told me his whole life. He said, you got to show a side of me that was wrong and that I didn't know better. And right. I grew up. But how I changed. He goes, because people can change. He changed because of that trip he and evolved, that, and that yes. relationship. And then it was a tax. Oh, yeah, he changed, of course. Well, well the, the real trip was a year and a half. It wasn't two months. Pete wanted to condense it down. And he was right by doing it. Yes, because it puts a ticking clock about, get, about getting back getting for, back for Christmas, Christmas and all that. And all that, there wasn't. We did, they did that uh, part of the trip, and then they went on. They did a total of a year and a half together. So wow. over that time, my father did change. Uh, they, they had a sort of love affair, those two guys, with the differences with them. I mean, it was a perfect odd couple. It was, a, you know, just tee it up. It, it had so much going for it going in. And uh, I wasn't really ever supposed to be funny, but I, you know, I played Pete tapes of my father talking and we heard Don, the stuff I did with Don Shirley and then I, things my father used to say that I put in. And it just came out funny because it's real life characters. We know we know characters. We grew yes. up with characters. Yes. My father was a character. And to right. pair him up with Don Shirley, who had his own personality, right? Uh, total opposites, it, it worked on those, on those levels. Now, how do you feel, we're getting off Green Book for a second, how do you feel, Nick, about now you cannot be nominated unless you have a certain amount of people in the cast, or, uh, everything is like, and again, we, we can speak honestly, and uh, there has to be a certain ethnic, and everybody has to play. I, I just think what you're doing is like, in other words, so Godfather couldn't have been made today. No. Well, it would have been made, it just wouldn't have been nominated for Best Picture. I think that kicks in next year or this, I, I, next I just think that I don't understand. I think it. art's supposed to be just open. It's like telling, I mean, uh, yeah. and you have guys out there that are brilliant filmmakers, and it's like telling, you know, Picasso, you can't use red or blue, right. or you have to use red or blue. I mean, it all depends on the story. If a story calls for certain characters, then fine. But it's it's suppressing storytelling because there's lots of stories that are about certain things. Like, you right. know, I, what if you wanted to make a movie about Eskimo women, who, when the men go off for a hunt, they're, they're starving, right. and they're, they leave the women in the igloos, and they get attacked by a giant polar bear, and the whole movie's about them fighting it. There's Eskimo women in it. That's it. That's, That's it. what that story is about. Did you get so, any? Uh, yeah. Did you get any Italians that were upset with you because you didn't use an Italian to play your father? Um, no. That that, that never really yeah. came up. That that didn't come yeah, up. Yeah, I wouldn't think so. You know, listen. Th it's it's acting. It's you know? acting. It's, it's, it's called acting, and actors should be able to play any role that, right. that that they could pull off or they could try to pull off. You know, um, yeah. You if it's an ethnic role, 
you want to try to cast the ethnicity because you, if you're going for realism. But if right. someone comes along, that means Brando wouldn't have been the Godfather, or Vigo right. wouldn't have played my father. It's it's not. It's about acting. It's, it goes back to the theater. There were there was the Shakespearean times that all the women were played by men. There were no actresses. There were men playing female roles. And right. I think actors should be actors. I think writers should be able to write the stories. Right. Filmmakers, whether it's theater, film, tell right. the story the best way you can. If that's having an actor play, uh, like what if they said all you can play, Chaz, is a guy from the Bronx. Uh, all you can uh, write about. You can't write about anything but guys in the Bronx. No, I, I couldn't take you, you that. You can't. No. It's, it's, it's not right. What if you wanted to write a movie about guys going to the moon? Ask us. You could write it. What if you wanted to play right. uh, a Russian uh, right. immigrant that comes over yeah. and you want to play it? It should be open to, to the, the, uh, the creative. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and then that's it. Now, did you, uh, growing up, you grew up where? In the Bronx. In the Bronx, that's right. Growing up, did you always want to be a filmmaker or in show business? Always. Always. I wanted to be a, uh, it was like 241st on White Plains Road. That was the area that I was in. My right. father was 215th Street over right. there. Um, uh, you know, my mother said when I was, even when I was little, I, I was always yapping, 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 even when I couldn't talk. I was always trying to talk. And she says, the only way I would shut up, she'd put me in front of a TV. I was mesmerized by the television. So right. I, there was something inherently in me. The first movie I ever went to a movie theater was, was um, Mary Poppins. My mother took me. I made it take me five days in a row. Wow. I just loved film. I loved film. I loved theater. Mary Poppins had bought the record. But watching the movie, I, was, I wanted to be Dick Van Dyke. I always had it in me. And I was a voracious reader, right. which uh, I think is uh, very important for everyone's lives yes. to, to read. But, you know, and as a good book puts you in the book. You visualize it like a movie. At least yes, I yeah, did, yes. right? And I think most people, that's what, before there were movies. You're reading something, it's it's transporting you somewhere else. Your mind, your imagination takes you somewhere. So to me, that was movie making in, in a way. So I always, um, when I got a chance, my father bought me a uh, uh, like a Super 8 millimeter camera. I would take little film right, movies right, right, I right. cut them with scissors cut right. them together so I was always aspiring to do that and the acting I loved so I was in New York I, I I acted I took film classes I did whatever I could a lot of theater lots of theater I did because that was part of that, le learning you had growing. to learn the craft that's right I mean so, when you, when you're struggling very similar you know obviously to me growing yeah. up in the Bronx and struggling and now you're on the stage getting two Academy Awards. I mean, that's crazy, man. Yeah, crazy. It I was mean, crazy. I, I mean... I mean, that's I, crazy. It's something I wanted to do my whole life, that movie. But it, you don't think of it that way. I mean, there's moments of... Uh, because getting Pete involved and then getting the Mahershala and Vigo and yeah. Linda Cardellini, starting building the actors like that and the, and the, and the, and the quality of production and then going in there and readings and rehearsals and then shooting and there were moments when i kind of felt oh this is really good this is coming out really good did you know I'm not thinking about did you know it was good while you were shooting it yes that's what i mean there were moments, yes. i mean there were times the crew was crying there were times the crews applauded there were times the crews were laughing they about you busted out loud and people would say cut so you knew you had people it changed the vibe of the set like when there were heavy scenes and Mahershala had some heavy scenes and so did Vigo. They had some heavy, heavy scenes. Mm. There was a quiet on the set. Like you everyone knew. You feel the tension. Yeah. So through all that, we I think we all thought, wow, this is we have something here. Now, Academy Awards, yeah. screenplay awards. Uh, I honestly I didn't think of that stuff. That when that started happening, I'm like, Well, this is this is pretty cool. This is real. Yeah. Do you remember the first time you saw it with an audience? Um, yes. It was at the uh, Toronto... Um, Toronto Film Festival. Film Festival. And was well, it Actually, no. I'm wrong. They had two test screenings beforehand. I think I might have told you this. Maybe I didn't. They had two test screenings, and um, they said, you know, a movie like this, two guys in a car talking, you know, the, the, the numbers are going to be low. That's okay. We'll, we'll take the the, the, the uh, comments and we'll. 
So it was sold out test screening, the first one. Right. And, you know, we, we're all in there, sitting there as well. No, were they laughing? Yeah, they're laughing, they're right, crying, right. they're quiet. Right. Hoping. So I'm thinking, this, this, I think they're loving this. I think we're going to get a decent score, right. you know? And this is, they get these companies that do these tests. Oh, I know the, them. I know the, them the very score, well, right? yes. We were told we'd get a 60, 65, uh, probably. Yeah. They'd be happy with that. And then we're going to go in and cut and change. Yeah. So they do the thing. People stand up. They're applauding. They keep 20 people. Everyone fills out their thing. They keep 20 people. They send the rest out to be tallied up. And they, the guy's doing a Q&A with the 20 people. All right, uh, you know, one to five, uh, five being the worst, one being the best. Who, as a show of hands, uh, let's go for five. There's nothing. Uh, a four? Do you think it's a four? No. One, everyone. Uh, what about this? That everybody, the, the twenty people they had, all were giving it the highest wow. rating you could get, which is so rare. So rare. So they wow. send them out. They come in with the with the the uh, the numbers. Huh? The, and, and I see the guys talking. Wait, wait, wait. What? <laughs> Guy goes, uh, I've never seen this before. He said, but the uh, the rating is a uh, hundred. Are you kidding me? Never before done. I've never heard of that. Never before. I never done. heard of it. I heard. I think the best I ever heard was like eighty nine. Yeah, I think the record was either it was one of the Cameron movies. I'm not sure if it was uh, if it was uh, Alien, Titanic, or um, the other. Or but it was it was a Cameron movie. I think most might have been the highest 90, yeah. 90 something or something. So they said that there was a mistake. Blah blah blah. We had this big meeting the next day. This is an aberration. Something's wrong. No. This can't be. They do it again. So we got to do it again right away. We're going to do another one. But this time we're going to do it. They did it down, um, what's the area where the Queen Mary is? They did it a little south of, uh, of L.A., uh, the, the Long Beach. Yes. We're going to do one right in L.A. in Sherman Oaks, more film savvy people. We'll get a better read on this. They do it, blah, blah, blah. So I'm saying to Pete, listen. It can only go down. So this they're going to say, you see, it went down. I said, yeah. we're, we're, it's almost a setup. Right. The, the number can only go down. And long story short, they come back, same thing. And uh, so someone from the studio said, did it, did it go down? The number they goes, yeah, it's a 99. Someone gave it a, a good instead of a very good. So the point was, it was like nothing to be said. They wanted to cut it. They so they didn't touch it after that. They wanted to cut like 40 minutes out. Even it. after that? Yeah, it's, you know, it's the Hollywood story. And I got to say, Steven Spielberg saved the movie. Pete sent it over to him and said, here's my rough cut. What do you think? And he, he came back and said, you don't cut a frame out of this movie. He goes, and we're keeping it the way it is. And that's it. And they shut up. That was it. Steven Spielberg said, that was wow. it. So um, we were very blessed with have him. But how can you this. get 199 and you still want to cut it? How long was the movie? I think it was two Two hours and ten minutes. And they wanted to cut with the, with the credits. And they wanted to cut forty minutes out. Yeah, yeah, approximately. I mean, it was battled. It, that was tossed around when we had the script too. Cut out things out of the script. But you know what? I could go on and tell you all the negative things that happened, but we won. You won. <laughs> so it worked out amazing. It was like tough. I always tell you, you, you it was won. a big learning experience, and um, it's Hollywood filmmaking. They have their reasons why they want to do this, do things. But Pete but stuck to his guns. Steven Spielberg supported Pete all the way across the board. And um, the movie, I think, stands stands up. And, well, God and, bless Steven know. Spielberg for, yeah, uh, for really. standing behind you guys. And, I mean, and very on. nice. Great guy. Very gracious to me. Right. To my brother. To the Green Book family, so to speak, when we yeah, were home, yeah. we'd go to events. I met, he, I met, he was yeah, I met him once. So really a brilliant, yes. really nice man. Yeah, really, very much. Really nice man. And... Uh, Thank God. Wow. Stephen, God bless you. God bless you yeah, no. for 100,000 years, you and your family. Because you need somebody like that. I said, what are you, 40 minutes? Because you cut 40 minutes out of that, it's not the same movie. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I, me coming from my, my background, you know, when we were getting a little attacks or things like that, with this, and I would say, Pete, but Pete, Pete's a pro. Pete knows how to talk to the studio. He wants right. to please. He wants. To, he, he's he's great at that. Right. But Pete also had a vision for the movie. So really, what made me glad was that Pete's vision is on that screen. That's the movie he wanted. Right. That was his cut. How he wanted to do it. Right. And that was what was kept. So. Um, 
I mean, I couldn't be happy. It's just amazing to me that something can get a score of 100, 99, and you still want to piss on it. I, 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 ugh. I'm in awe by this business. Yeah. I am truly in awe by this business. And I agree with people when they say, it is a miracle to get a movie made, and it's another miracle that they make money. Yeah. It is. Yeah. This, well, luckily, this movie made money as well. This, it, so exactly. They, it, it, uh, it did what it had to do. It, 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 we took a lot of hits, but, you know... It's like in uh, The Godfather. Wow. He's still alive. We hit him with five shots and he's, he's still, still alive. alive. So that's what it was. Now, do you feel, I mean, look, where are you going to go from here? You won the Academy Award, two of them. Back to the pizzeria. No, no, well, you know <laughs> what I'm saying. No, do you mean like, it's hard because now you got to write, you write more stuff. You're going to be doing another movie now. We could talk about that, yeah, right? Yeah. That's Amore. Yeah. Uh, with John Travolta. Yes. And uh, Catherine. Catherine Heigl. Catherine Heigl, who I love, I think she's incredibly beautiful and funny. Yeah, amazing. And funny. Talented. And John, we all know, John is just a terrific human being. And Chaz dude. Palminteri. And, well, thank you, and I'll be in it too. And yes. The wonderful Chris Walken. Yes. You know, and so, um, I, I mean, you're excited about that, right? Uh, that's, yeah, I'm thrilled about that. That's something, a story I had for a long time. Too. There's another story you wrote. The, and yeah, this one time. is about Italians also. Not that I write everything about Italians, but th no. this one happens to be that way. But it's a romantic comedy musical. Musical. To see John singing and dancing again is uh, going to be amazing. Wow. So wow. Uh, I, that's kind of the first movie I've gotten made. I've done a lot of writing jobs since of course, Green yes. Book, but this will be the first one I'm, I'm making and then I'll... I'll be directing this. Well, one you also directed the pilot that me and Kenny DeGuilla wrote, yeah. uh, Unorganized Crime, which yes. you did an incredible job on that. You did a great job. Thanks. I loved it. Um, so, I mean, Nick, um, like if you had your, what would you, how many movies you would like to make in your lifetime as a director, you think? Well, you know, you go, <laughs> How many can I make? Can you make? Right. Yeah. So right. you you know you see, you see Scorsese and, and the greats and Coppola and uh, Ridley Scott. Yeah, they're still going. They they, they want to make movies. Yeah, it's funny. I like, love movies. I love, love movies. watching them. I I, I want to make as many as I can make. Yeah, that are quality and good and and try to. Um, for me, a lot of it. I love all kinds of movies. So I would do a horror movie, sci fi, but I have this a bunch of movies that I want to do that are like. I, you call them feel good movies, like the feeling you had from Green Book at the end. You know, I go back to It's a Wonderful Life being one of my favorite oh. movies. So you oh. have that in your head. But then again, The Godfather is one of my favorite movies. Oh, Citizen absolutely. Kane. Yeah. But it's they, they all blend together in your in, in what you have in your background or your mind about filmmaking right. and the quality. Can I aspire to make something that good? So um, you have to be careful in what you do. Sometimes you have to work, though. Sometimes you have to just take jobs, which I used to do a lot in my past before in yeah. my book. And I wasn't proud of a lot of things I did. I wasn't, some things I didn't want to do at all, but you have to. You have to, yeah, you have to you pay the bills. Yeah, you know, you know, I got so someone I can direct. I got to direct this movie. It's not, doesn't have everything I want, but I'll do my best. But now I got to be a little bit careful because I also want to. You want to leave some kind of. Um, yeah, the word legacy. I don't have a legacy based on one movie. I have. Well, one, that's one a movie. legacy. I'm. I'm sorry. You but, won best movie of the year, best screenplay of the year. But you, you know, <clears throat> even those type of movies, like you know, uh, I remember, I, my father knew you for a long time, and I met you here and there a couple places. But there was a Santa Barbara Film Festival, and they had a Bronx Tale there, and I had a I had a movie I made for like two hundred grand there. Wow, and um. You were there at some party, and we talked a little bit. And I watched The Bronx Tale for the first time there at this festival. Right. And it was so inspiring to me. I mean, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, similarities with you and oh, I. But, but But you also don't realize how you affect other people. So that, the fact that I'm like, wait, I'm at a film festival with him, and he's got this amazing movie about his life and Robert De Niro and the movie itself is tremendous and he did it and he he pulled a, a Stallone which only Stallone and him ever did re yeah. really for the most most part uh, um, uh, uh, my big factory wedding she did it too I don't want to leave her out um, yeah Mir, uh, Vardalis great but the point was 
it inspired me even more. I'm like, it can be done. It can Maybe be done. Maybe I can do this. Right. I'm here. I'm at the festival. My movie's a little tiny little movie, that I, but it doesn't matter. I'm still here. I can still aspire. I could still. So like you inspired that in, in me. Well, uh, I appreciate uh, But that. it also shows, but your movie is lasting too. It inspires a lot of people. Mm. And we can't help but say, it's not a matter of that or Italians and the Bronx, but Italians, a lot of them want to be filmmakers, want to be actors. Yes. You look up to the people that make it. You look yeah. to, up to their stories of how they made it. Right, right. And, it, and, it, and it, I t- movies like that, your movie and a few other people, the things that said, wait, maybe I can do this too. Maybe I can do it but too. you got to keep working your butt off. Work, right. work, work. Right, right, right. Get kicked. Go down. Get back up. Get back up. And keep doing it. Right. But... Um, very inspirational and um well thanks, thanks. Like I said, so as far as legacy like i think i got to do a few more good movies to have any kind of legacy but that's what i'm aspiring to do yeah I keep keep trying do you feel um you don't feel pressure because you won the academy or that you got to do something as good as that i i don't think well you know what i i, I would speak to filmmakers certain filmmakers like uh woody allen and he would say the reason why he writes and does a movie every year was because it's just about putting it out there. You never know what movie's going to hit, what movie's not going to hit. He said it's it's about being productive, being prolific, and just put it out there. Right. And he said, <clears throat> the way he said this to me, I'll never forget, he said, at the end of my lifetime, if I make 80 movies, he goes, I hope 10 are brilliant, maybe another 20 are good, real good, then maybe another 15 are eh, not that great. <laughs> And then maybe another 20 or 15 suck. He goes, but I, I can't control that. All I can do is just keep putting it out there. And I said, wow, that's a great way to look at it. You know, Don't put so much pressure on yourself. Just put it out there, and you know what? Write another one. Right, write another one. Keep making them. But I think as long as you go into every one with the, you're, you're aspiring to make a great movie. Yeah. You want it to be good. But there's some, some movies that are Bigger stories than others. They're small stories. Right. Maybe you want to make a little independent movie. I would still shoot a movie for a million bucks if I if it was yeah. something I believed in and good. Yeah. And most most of the time, those movies are not going to break out. But maybe it's a story you just want to tell. Right. You, you want you want to do. You know, I talked to a lot of filmmakers, like for example, George Gallo, who we know. You know, oh, uh, George. Midnight Run and Bad Boys and so many movies. Yeah. And he's a great director as well. And some movies are bigger. Um, and some movies are smaller stories. You know, he's an artist. He did one about him growing up as a painter and some beautiful filmmaking. So they're not all going to be nominated for Academy Awards. Or if ever again, if I'm if I never even get close to that world, if I can tell the stories I want to tell and I know I'm telling them truth, right. truthfully and I'm doing the best I can do. Uh, John Travolta said this to me once. He goes, you know, every movie I do, uh, I put 100% into it. It's a movie I want to make, a story I, I, I believe in and want to tell. Right. He said, so I'm no different on a giant movie or something that's supposedly like, oh, this is a big one. He puts 100% to anything he does. Yes. And that's that told me a lot. And I said, yeah, this, that, that's, as long as you're putting your heart and soul into it and you're trying to make the best film possible. Yes. Uh, criticism, you're going to get critics, you're going to get knocked down, you're going to get... But yeah, that goes with the territory. Yeah. Anything that's art is art. It's going to be art. criticized. It's going to be criticized. See, that that doesn't bother yeah. me. No, I don't read reviews. I've directed movies. I never read a review. Never. I've acted in movies. Never read a review. Oh wow. Have it, and I know, and I could say that my hand to God. The only the only reviews I ever read with my first one was Bronx Hill, and that was a terrible thing to read because they were all great, and I knew this is a mistake. And it was actually Bob De Niro who said to me, don't read reviews, Chaz. Because if you believe the great ones, you got to believe the bad ones. Yeah, but that movie, you know, you, you pulled off but your it, dream. It, it was and, my dream. And you deserved I, it. So. I have to say that I did read them, yeah. yes. And, and you know, you, again, you, you left, yeah. you, you handed off your story to someone else who brilliantly oh. told the story with, yes. you, with your participation. So yes, just but no, he, That's look, amazing. No matter how great your script was, and it was great, obviously, it won the Academy Award, you get that to a bad director, he screws it up. Oh, yeah. A bad director can screw up a great script. I'm sorry. I don't care how great the script is. He will screw it up. I mean, you had the perfect, perfect, 
people doing your movie. Yeah. Yeah. No, with Pete again, I bring it up again. I I gave it, I handed it off to him. And he protected it. He right. nurtured it. He did things I never would have thought of. Right. He elevated it, I yes. thought too. Even yes. as good he elevated it. Well, a great director makes it fly. So and 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 the the, the all the actors uh, were so behind them, but Vigo and Mahershala, you know, there's there's some shaky ground in there. Those are a lot of tough scenes. There's a lot of sto- part of that story that's hard to pull off if it's done the wrong way. It's yes. taken the wrong. So there were a lot of delicate moments, and they they trusted in Pete completely, and and right, it is what it is. We, well, we, 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 we the movie came out amazing. Now, I got to tell you, Nick, it's it's been great having you. And what advice before we close? What advice would you give? I'm sure you get it, young filmmakers, young writers. When they say to you, you know, Mr. Valdelongo, is there anything you could tell me to help me in my career? What, what do you usually say to them? Well, I get asked that now because because of Green Book. I'm writing off Green Book a lot, but I get seminars and sometimes film festivals right, and Q&As. Right. And I think, why does anyone want to listen to what I have to say about anything? But, oh, come on. Nick. Well, you know, I, they have a lot to listen to what you but say. But the one thing I do say is, uh, and it sounds cliche, um, in my case... I sacrificed a lot of things in life that sometimes used to question. I don't do this. I don't do that. I haven't done this, but this this career, maybe I should stop. You have those thoughts, right? Because you're human. You're human. And right. other That's people, correct. and when then sometimes there's failure after failure after failure. I couldn't get things going, and I was like you. I worked as a doorman. I right. was a bouncer. I was writing it during the day, working these nights. How long jobs. were you trying to make get Green Book made? Oh, Green Book again. From my twenties, so Jesus God. Know. So the point of it is, the one thing though that I didn't do is I, with all that going on, I kind of I, I have faith, so I believe in God, and I used to think to myself, well, maybe I got to take, maybe God's showing me, hey, give up, this isn't what you're supposed to do. But I go, maybe God is showing me, uh, I wouldn't have had you go through all this if it wasn't for a reason, right? So I believed in that. I said, I don't believe, I believed in myself. I believed in it. Along the way, there were enough people that said, wow, this writing is great. Wow, that this movie may not be that big of a movie, but there's some amazing scenes. The directing is really right. great. But there are movies that you never heard of, and but there was enough to keep me thinking. Right. But then you have it goes, all, all that means something, but it all goes back to yourself. Is this what you want? If Is this what you believe in? Don't give up. Yeah. Don't give up. But don't dream, work, work, yes. work, 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 work. Right. Keep right, right, if you're a writer, whatever it is you're doing. Keep writing. You could be a dancer, you could be a, a right. singer, you could be a writer of whatever kind. Work hard, because you're not getting there without hard work. Not everyone uh, um, yes. makes it early in life. Yeah, like, I you think know. you made it when you were supposed to make it. When I was supposed and to the make. right person, the right people did it. Because I keep telling you this, and we'll end with this. You say, you know, uh, some people said this, you know, whatever. You know, however, whenever you win a category, you always get people bad-mouthing. But what I could say to people who bad-mouthed you, you won! <laughs> you know what I always say? <laughs> Folks, he won. Two Academy Awards. Best picture, best screenplay. That's it. You won, and I don't care what you say, you are leaving a legacy. That's a great movie. There's only been 92 best pictures. You are one of them. You should be extremely proud of yourself. It's an incredible thing what you did. Uh, It is a privilege to have you on the show. Thank you. Honor to be here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. No, it's a privilege. And look, this is proof to all the young filmmakers out there. Chas Palmateri, Nick Vallelongo, two guys from the Bronx. We did it. We did it. You can do it. You know, dreams are for people. You want to dream? Have those dreams when you're awake. Work hard. Yes. Okay? All right, this is the Chaz Palmentary Show. Thank you so much. Don't forget, go to chazpalmentary.net. And if you want to see my one-man show, come and visit my restaurants. You might see me there having a cappuccino, 30 West 46th Street in Manhattan, and 264 Main Street in White Plains. God bless you all, and I'll see you next week.